working with today. I liken the assignment to the assignment undertaken by Nehemiah in the Bible, who in 52 days rebuilt the broken walls of Jerusalem. Government College Omaha old boys have 52 weeks to rebuild the broken down Government College Omaha. We can do it because the plan is to restart our alma mater as a great school in September 2020. And I look forward to working with all of us in, on this exciting project. It will be tasking. We all need to mobilize resources from ourselves. But I believe it will be exciting also because we have longed for this day when we can actually rebuild Government College Omaha. Thank you for listening. thrilling for me. So I went for the interview. I went to do a written test again. 
in math and, <coughs> and English, and then an oral interview with the principal and the panel. And at the end of the day, but I knew I was going to be taking it, because my exam we took in the college, I, I got all the arithmetic questions right. I knew I would pass. And so I entered government college with math. It was such an achievement for me at that time, was such a blessing. So I didn't have to go to, I also passed to the MGS, but of course I didn't want to consider the MGS. And my hair was so suited, so suitable for my father who didn't have much money. Because I took my hair, we paid 20 pounds as school fees per term. But that was all that we paid. The school gave us school uniform, free. Gave us tissue paper, free. Gave us soap, free. Gave us very good meals. Every meal had uh, meat in it and uh, fruit, banana or orange. And every lunch time, we had uh, uh, palm wine to go with a uh, pounded yam. It was not pounded yam every afternoon, except Sunday, that we ate Gary, um, with fish soup that nobody seemed to like. But from Monday to Saturday, we ate pounded yam mixed with a little Gary. Oh, wow. You know, um, plus uh, 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 palm wine. So later, when the student population grew, they couldn't give us palm wine anymore. So they gave us a, a tin of yeast. Big thing of this life that would last us Mixed, yes. to make up for the yeast we're losing by oh, not drinking okay. palm wine. We're not giving the palm wine because of the yeast content. Okay. So we found my father would give us one pound as pocket money to go to school. And from that one pound, we had to save money to transport ourselves back. Not these days, parents have to go to school how many times in a year? My parents only came to my head. Seven years I was there, they came only once. <laughs> <laughs> and so, my hair provided everything. All you did was go and study and pass your exams. And so it was a, a very great experience for me. Then when I entered the school, of course, there was molestation. I wasn't uh, so much molested. I, I had my elder brother who was two years ahead of me. And so some deferred to him, and so they didn't give me a hard time. But uh, I had some hard time from one or two of my seniors. <laughs> That's why they call it DJ and Jokes. <laughs> I think it's from the Army Mosaic. You know, school was in my house also. I was in Simpson House up to 1963 when there was a reshuffle okay. of all the students because schoolhouse was getting too powerful. They were winning everything. All the sportsmen seemed to be in schoolhouse. They had to reshuffle. So I moved from Simpson to school. To school. <laughs> So and I, and I finished in schoolhouse. So, but Umaya meant a great deal to me. I had transformation. And I said I was sick. Yes, I was. But it's not a physical, some kind of a, maybe psychologists will call it depression. You know? It was tormenting me. I was having a hard time. But then at Government College, I found the Lord. Everything changed. I found Jesus Christ. And one day in the dormitory, my class four, the Lord appeared to me in a vision of light that shone in the dormitory. I only saw it. And at that very moment, so that experience, one early morning in the dormitory, my class four, instantly changed my life. Changed my personality from an introvert to almost to an extrovert. You know, from there I was a different person. I came out from that dormitory, totally transformed person. And as I was walking down from the dormitory to the classroom area one afternoon, midway just behind Fisher House, yeah, Fisher House. I noticed something which was lifted off from my head, fume. And I began to see clearly for the first time in many, many years and to think clearly that cloud disappeared, yeah, yeah. lifted off me. And that was late in class four. And I began to understand science. You know, I went from one of the uh, uh, back... Uh, Average students. No, I mean in my, in my, in, in arithmetic, mathematics. In math. I went from one of the poor ones to the, I became the best. I could now understand my thesis very well. And if that thing had happened a little earlier, I would have been a science student. Yes. Then I began to understand physics and chemistry and all that. 
But then my mathematics got very well. So that transformation that took place in my life in 1962 you know, has sustained me. Uh, the spirit that entered into me that early morning began to teach me the Bible, began to uh, uh, give me and do gifts on me. I had gifts of healing, I could touch people and I get healed, you know, and so forth and so on. Then a remarkable thing before that it happened in my class too. There was a, a reading competition in school. Reading competition? Reading. 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 I entered for the competition as a class two boy and I won the junior reading prize. I beat not only my mates, but also the class three for boys in the school <laughs> to win the prize and I got a book prize. And you're asking me, I ask myself, how is it that a boy that came from a village school, Zion Central School of Pala, <laughs> to, to Government College in Bahia, we didn't go to any special school, no. we had no special preparations, the Lord like doing. Teachers. we just went in there. How is it that I began to speak English to the point of winning a, a student's a, a, Reading prize, yes. and I was getting first class certificates, <coughs> certificates in Festival of the Arts recitation competitions. And so that's how God moved me from a child who wanted to commit suicide to somebody who was not confident. Now began to see a future for himself and began to appreciate God and other people. And those gifts that God gave me now prepared me for the broadcasting career yes. that I had later. And, and I did not go for training anywhere. I, I, uh, when I left, I did high school at Umaya and went down to Lagos. I was playing hockey. I, that's another story. I was playing in one of my, the hockey groups. I wasn't in the A group or the school team group. I was in one of my groups and we were practicing. They, there were shorts in the A group. And they asked somebody to go around and see those who are playing well, get one or two to come and join the A group. Yes. So they came and picked me and I joined them. That's how I went to the A group. And then following I got calls in hockey. Hmm. You know, Can't be much. And then ended up being the, the Eastern Region Assistant Hockey and Cricket Coach now, wow. under Evan Spears. Wow. Mm -hmm. Smith was the hockey and cricket coach. Mm -hmm. I was his deputy. In fact, he was fooling around for me. So where are you? I was in Abba doing work in the Ministry of Labor as uh, assistant labor inspector. Yes. He said, would you like to come and join me at Enugu? I'm the regional coach, hockey and cricket. You can assist me. I said, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> because the training we got in Omaya said you must do everything to the best of your ability. And I was trying to do my work as yeah. assistant labor inspector yeah. to the best of my ability. But my boss called me one day and said, you have to come down. This is going to put you in trouble. You are too enthusiastic in doing this your job. You have to cool down. <laughs> because somebody who was being owed by his employer told them that he had given me the money. They should come to me for the money. And he gave me no money. And then when they reported to my boss, and the boss knew they didn't give me any money. Yes. They advised me to be very, very, I should take it easy. Yes. <laughs> I went to one uh, uh, employer, they were owing the staff, they were doing it. You know, I, don't, I didn't set out to memorize the, the uh, level code, code. code, but I had it all in my brain, all the sections, everything in my brain. <laughs> so I went to this man, I was putting sections for him. The man kept quiet. When I finished, can you finish? Put on, put well, put well. <laughs> if you don't leave my office now, I'm going to throw it out. <laughs> so I knew that that wasn't a job for me. Yes. So uh, immediately, Evan Smith Call offered me the job. I threw away the other one and went and joined with the people. So I became the regional assistant hockey cricket and hockey coach. Amazing. This is all the training I got in the government college. college. Then later, I was selected to go to India for one year to train as a professional coach. Oh, wow. 1971-72. hockey? In hockey, yes, it was hockey. Oh, wow. So I, I became the East Central State hockey and cricket coach after the war, you know. So later broadcasting, mm -hmm. the thing that got open for me at Government College of Maya, I went to, so I was playing hockey with a white man who was the manager in the USC, G.B. Oliver. I said to him, Mr. Saunders, 
this thing you do for Radio Nigeria, I used to uh, report for Radio Nigeria on hockey. I told him I could do it. He said, Raphael, if you can do it, I'm very glad I love you get, uh, let you do it. I said, I can do it. So, you know, I won first prize certificates in Facebook. Yes, yes. yes. So he took me to the producer, Yemi Fadigbe, and I made the same claim. Yemi Fadigbe said, okay, come, enter the studio. Yes. And he gave me a script. I didn't wait five seconds. He says, all right, you're on. <laughs> I took over from Mr. Yeah. Saunders. Wow. And that's how I became a broadcaster. Yeah, broadcast. During the war, I was hearing Kalansi and all that reading Elizabeth Show on Radio Biafra. Yes. So I went one day to Kalansi and said, Kal, uh, sir, <laughs> come on, Kal. Yes. I said, can I join you? Can I, I can read. I'm, I'm very good, you know. He said, but I'm not the producer. He's Kevin Nigel Ford as his producer. You better go and see him. So the next day I met Kevin Nigel Ford. Kevin said, I'm sorry, Judy, I'm sorry. I have a team uh, that are reading for me. Yes. And I'm, uh, throw any of them away. I told him, I said, sir, I'm very good. <laughs> <laughs> I've got first prize certificates, I've got junior reading prize, I'm very good. He said, well, if you are as good as you say you are, you come and prove it, I'm going to drop one of them and take you. Yes. So he took me to the studio, hmm. 15 seconds, he said, stop. Please, stop. <laughs> yeah. 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 Your own. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing story. story. Amazing. And Kevin and I are still friends till today. He's uh, 80 what now. Whoa. So uh, that's how I began broadcasting. So anybody who heard me on Kevin's program will ask Kevin, can who is that voice? Can he read for me? And then I will read for the person. Very soon I became the most heard voice in Biafra. Even though people didn't know, I only appeared on the news on Voice of Biafra. But all the other things we did, we didn't call our names, like Elevat Show, like all the programs we did, you know, we didn't call our names. But these are all the blessings that started okay. at Government College for my I want to tie it all up. So it was a major breakthrough for me. And that breakthrough happened at Government College of Mine. And I will ever remain grateful to God for giving me, for breaking through into me and giving me those gifts of understanding the word, of preaching the word. And I lay hands on people and they get healed, you know. So I thank God for, for that. So I became from somebody who couldn't associate with people. I began now to play games, yes. got colors in hockey, was in the uh, college cricket team, played a little tennis. I still play tennis, but I played this morning. That's small. The way it's long, yes. Wait, okay, wait. I'm 74 going to 75, but when I run in the, in the court, somebody was asking me one day, I said, Chief, how old do you say you are? 74? I can run this fast on the court. I say it's, it's, it's the grace of God. It's the grace of God. So these are all the blessings that came to me when I was at Government College and that have been with me ever, ever since. It's a great testimony. The way I was known for was it discipline. Yes. Uh, it was very, very important. The one key thing people said, you must act Omahian. If you behave in a way that wasn't Omahian, they said that is not Omahian. And when they tell you that is not Omahian, they have said to you, most of them say to you. But I found out later, Omahians weren't behaving Omahian anymore. That ethos of the college that was built into us, many of people who left government college weren't keeping up to it anymore. And the change began. Well, I was at Government College in the late uh, uh, 60s, and I left in, in 65, in the middle 60s, when people have, have come to the college from other schools to do HAC. Yes. They had the white shirts, yes. the mixture. You could find somebody smoking at Government College. It was horrible. Even at that time, there was another person taking him at the Government College. It was horrible, you know. And then Eric Osima was our principal. He had. Uh, Cheapened flogging. The Wairam who took who, who preceded him, the, the African uh, preceded him, would flog you two strokes, one stroke, two strokes, maximum three strokes. It wasn't the it was supposed to uh, 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 be pain. It was supposed to be a, a painful thing. Yes. It is the significance that you are caring. When they hear that somebody was caring, that is it was a major event. Done. The thing that nobody should do. And every customer came was giving people 
24. That is true. Uh, so, okay. Yes. So, Canaan lost the, the mystique, you know. Yes. That's when I came to the mother, 20 through 24. You know, the people that have the Canaan. That's what I'm saying. Where am I staying there? Then you came on that Where am I? If you do something very well, you give me one stroke. If you so serious, maximum three strokes. The record was small, given 12, 24. The record small the first black principle. Yes, like yes. Um, what did you expect? Yes. <laughs> like progress to. You know? So, these are some of the virtues that we learned at Omaha. And there were two boys, I won't mention their names, but they, were, they showed what Omaha was about. One, and, and, and class one, class two, he was about the bottom of the class. But he was a brilliant child. So he decided that this was not where he should be and decided not to be there. So he began to study. He had beaten off all his fingers and, and crumpled off his head, studying. So he moved from the bottom of the class to the middle of the class. By the time it was uh, class three of, of four, he was at the first in the class, first throughout the, yeah, the uh, uh, class four, a uh, class five, and had the best school self result. You know, he's still alive. You know, so this is a good thing. When with uh, doctor, um, if you ask twenty people now, now, the interpretations of the meaning of life, I am sure you may get twenty different interpretations. However, you can look at life as a walk through the sand of time. As you walk, have you ever cared to look back and assess the sort of footprints? You are living in the sand. Are these footprints muddy, untidy, rough, dirty, and embarrassing, or are they so horrible that no good nor honorable man would want to identify with them? Are your footprints clean, decent, and worthy that people will strive to walk, to walk in and identify with them, appreciate and even celebrate them? Today we are celebrating these great minds, old boys of Government College Umaya, who have made clean, tidy and worthy footprints in the sand of time, distinguished themselves academically and their chosen field of endeavors. Sir, Umayans, both living and dead, are very proud of you people. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I thought so too. Yeah. I didn't know that about you were thinking finally or something. Yeah, I was the process of saying something on this. You can still say something one or two. You can say that you can you can, you can you can put it because there was something you wanted to say about yeah. the changes that are going on there, some qualities that are important in the yes. new government college. You identified one or two yes. minutes. Okay, I only Make it brief, brief, just one minute. Um, Alright, as I was saying, there was something in Omaha that made people to strive for excellence, even in situations where we thought uh, any other person could have given up. I mentioned about the guy who, was, who started at the bottom of the class and ended up right at the top of the class and had the best school result. There was another that even failed school set, unheard of in our time. And he had the courage to sit back and repeat the class. Mm -hmm. It was an embarrassing situation, but he weathered it. Spent another year, repeated the class, and made a uh, grade two, division two, and went out. Then when he left school, he struggled on his own, did A-levels, went to the university, did geology, and we had a 2-1 in the university. Mm. And after that, he went on and did a, 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 a MSc, and then did a PhD, and did a, a DSc, and he's a mm. professor today. Mm. You see, this is kind of stuff my hands were made of. Yes. You know, they did, he didn't give up. He, he, he took the embarrassment. He knew he failed himself, and he was prepared to do something to show that having stumbled, you can get up and get going again. So, but towards the end of our time at my Bahia began to change. Students began to do the things that were absolutely on Umayyan. I mentioned about somebody smoking, things that were unheard of. People, somebody using hemp, you know, which was unheard of. 
you know. But these are isolated incidents. But they happened, and it's unfortunate that they did. There was even a case of some senior boys having affairs with wives of, st of uh, teachers, you know. It rained at the time, it was terrible, <laughs> you know. And uh, <laughs> 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 you know? So they were removed. It was, it was really was very, very my things that they did. But and leaving school, my hands have been in politics, they have been in business. Some of those things we learn, those ethics, those ethos, you know, that abandoned them. If I know my hands smoking, my hands using uh, uh, drugs, you know, after, after, the, after, uh, after they've left school. And it's really, really, really uh, disheartening. And then you're hoping to see. Those virtues still living on, but you get so discouraged when you don't find them. But it's not everybody. We can't go there. There are still Mayans who retain the virtues that the Maya taught them. The virtues of hard work, virtues of integrity, virtues of uh, enterprise. And I thank God for the new, the younger Mayans. You know, the older ones like us weren't very entrepreneurial. You know, we 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 were brought up to be. Uh, administrators, yes. civil servants, who are heads, <laughs> heads of the departments, yes. who aren't uh, uh, go-getters in business, and that's why we don't have money. You know, those who have money now are the younger ones, you know, <laughs> and they can to make their money and, and refurbish my head. But the seed of discipline had been sown. Give me a signal. You know? And so we thank God for the experiences we had in Omaya, the training we had in Omaya, and the takeaways that went with as we left Maya, and we believe that the, the current effort to revamp the uh, structures in Maya will succeed so that Maya can come back to his last glory. Thank you.